Mrs. Ruby Crouch Morrow. Today is April the 11th, 2006, and we are at her home uh, on Franklin Road in Mooresville. And Ms. Crouch, we thank you for letting us come and, and uh, interview you today. And we know that your family, the Crouch family, and your relatives started many businesses and several businesses in Mooresville. So would you like to tell us first about your, your father's house-moving business? Well, the house moving business got started after the war ended. He was in it before. He started when he uh, first got started was the day that I got, I was born. My mother fell on ice and I was born and he got back from South Carolina after buying the uh, house moving company down there and he wouldn't believe them and that's how I can remember how long he was in business. <laughs> but during the war, the, the house moved business dwindled. I have a lot of pictures of them that the, after the war that they did. But during the war, he started, um, uh, they had a welding school. He and Joe Brannon started a welding school where they taught me how to weld, and they'd go off to the shipyards and get jobs. Then he had a, we had a recapping business, tires. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't buy new tires back then. And then, we had a, a taxi company that, that back then you could buy gas for about 20 cents a gallon <laughs> that way, and I couldn't believe it, but uh, uh, I think the fares uh, were about 25 cents a piece, and a lot of these men that were, drove the taxis, we had, the, I believe it was, I, I, my, our company had 11 or 13 cars, but they would take people pick them up and take them to the mill to work and be there to bring them home for 25 cents a trip. And then, uh, uh, let's see, there was uh, Harry Keeter and uh, Smith uh, uh, was in, I had a business, and Flip Beaver had a, uh, uh, that was the ongoing business back during the war, I guess. And uh, then when the war ended, people, construction started picking up. And then Daddy got back into it. We sold our company to uh, Flake Monday. I don't know if y'all remember him or know him or not, but people will remember him. And we rented the service station where the uh, uh, BB Bank is now. I feel like every time I walk in that I'm walking on old ground <laughs> up there. But we, we rented the service station for Monona Smith who was just right next door, and she ran a, a cleaning, a pressing club. And her brother-in-law, his name, last name was Carr, K-E-R-R, -R. but Miss Monona's been gone now, he like that. And up there, but that, her server, her business, bu building is still there, let's see. And I used to walk up and down the street. I could go to the post office there on the corner two or three times a day just to get out of the office and then uh, I'd go to the bank and I could get go in and out each door. I used to know every merchant in Mooresville. So you actually worked for your father there? Yeah, I worked for him for 14 years until after I had my son, uh, Ken, and uh, uh, I finally moved to, uh, we moved to Danville, Virginia, when he was about six months old. And Josephine Anderson took my job, and she just retired this past year. Been there fifty some years, you see. And it's she's in her nineties, isn't that right? Yeah, she just turned ninety. I think in her nineties, yeah. And she still she could still work, but uh, uh, I guess she thought it was time to give it up. <laughs> she was real good. She was a blessing to us. She used to work for my granddaddy uh, and Graham. Westmoreland on the Mooresville Roof Company and they, uh, before, and the, the, uh, Homer Westmoreland was, worked for him. He was booking, he, he brought his wife Dot uh, uh, into uh, to the business. And so Josephine, I was lucky to get Josephine to take over for me. And then when I moved back from Danville, I didn't, I didn't take the job back. I felt like she needed to work, you know, more than I did, and uh, wanted to keep it. And then I knew I was I decided that it wasn't fair to uh, for Ken just to be by himself. 
and uh, I got up the courage to get pregnant again, <laughs> but not dreaming that I was going to have twins that time. And then, and then, like I told you, uh, they were just nine months old when I got pregnant again with Becky. So uh, I had my hands full for a few years <laughs> that way. But uh, in the meantime, before then, uh, oh, before I got married, before Kenneth got back home from the war, I worked at uh, the theater. I would relieve them, uh, uh, Peggy Fleming and uh, Gladys McKenzie, their lunch hour, their dinner hours, lunch hour, so I could get in to see the movies free. <laughs> and I saw every movie that there was. Which theater and, was that? Huh? Which, which theater was that? Oh, we had the State Theater, Carolina Theater, and the Moore Theater. There were three three movies. That, see, we didn't have television back then. In fact, my daddy bought the first television set in Morrisville, and it was just a little square thing like that. You can't tell. I can still see it sitting there. Back about there. what year was that? The the television, it was before, about 44, 45, I would say, before I got married, but like that. Yeah, he could see it like that. Uh, I think that's when you'll find out. Yeah. Uh, Bill Brown, he used to come by and see it. He he had written about when one daddy uh, about his television set, expecting to come in and find a great big. I say it was about an eight by ten <laughs> <laughs> screen on it. And of course, then they got it got bigger. You know, as it as they uh, uh, progressed uh, uh, in the, the TV business. Well. What was there a great demand for house moving at that time? Uh-huh. Yeah, house moving. People buy lots and things. You can't tell. Like that. There was a great many things. See, uh, a second moving here. Uh, let's see. I can, let's see if I can see any great big things here. And Oh, well, another thing, the reason I, I found, tell him, tell him, Daddy would send him off out of town to take the crew to move the buildings because he didn't have to check on him. And he did that. that's the way I got it done that way. So, um, uh, Poindexter House sits a great big house is here, here. And in fact, I remember when the fellow, tra these trailers, can you see these pictures? This is the library over in Winston Salem, I think, and they, these houses that way. Well, so go, got, go back go back, let me get get the other pictures on that previous page. Yeah. The the house on the top. What is what is that? Okay, I don't it's just being moved, I don't know. Yeah. I've got Winston Salem over in Winston Salem. And this this is the Poindexter house, Winston Salem. Okay. Right here, this down here. Okay. And these down here. All right. And this is the library in the uh, West of Salem. Uh, in in West of Salem. Uh huh. Let's see. Here's Raleigh, and Newburn. They had to go to the eastern part of the state. Kill, would come in on Friday night and take off on Sunday night and go back. So, yeah. but there were there weren't a whole lot of house moving companies in North Carolina. So. No, no. I'm afraid they they started up when they. Uh, they start since then, got th that way. I uh, can't tell. Here's all the way. Let me see. I can't tell. I was going to see where's that bridge. Oh, yeah, here's a bridge. It's near Burlington. They even had to move a bridge. Can you get that one? Let, let, me, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's see. Wait a minute. Uh huh. And here's an apartment building that was in Charlotte that was moved. It four apartments that way. Which one is the, wait a minute, which one was the bridge? That one right here. Okay, yeah. I got it, yeah, okay. I see it now. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it now. Okay, okay. And this is the Lewis Smith House in Raleigh. Lewis Smith House. Look at the side see, of that house. See, Daddy was very well known. He had a brother, uh, Garland Crouch, that, uh, when they was, when they when Daddy came to Moore's the first, he and his this brother were in business together. 
but the brother Garland moved to Asheville and uh, uh, started his business up there. And he didn't seem to come down this neck of the woods <laughs> after Daddy got started. Let's see. Couple's dream house arrived on Quill. But uh, I remember the the man that t sold Daddy the trailer that they started moving houses on. They used to just put them on uh, rollers and things and pull them like that. But this is this was a, 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 an awakening for them. Let's see, what was this? Okay. Stateful record and landmark. But, mm -hmm. Granddaddy of all mobile homes. Oh, that was good many here. Historic house ends journey. This is written by a photographer Crouch Brothers. Okay. The House of Historic Home Complete. They moved the stage for landmark moving to a new site. It was moved twice, I think. I think. I'm not sure if this is the is it, this is the house or not there. But it's not very plain. I've got them down there in the thing. Lowest the new setting. Cost them. Oh, it moved to Walnut Street. Well, cost about $45,000. I bet they'd have to get 145 now. <laughs> <laughs> that way. Like the moving day. A barge carrying a 92-year-old house is pushed into Lake Erie by a tug Tuesday afternoon for a four-mile move up to the lake to a new site for a condominium project in Ohio. This, this just must be an article that I pulled out. You, you would think uh, this was the Morseville Depot, but it's the Statesville Depot, uh -huh. and I think it has been moved two or three times, the Statesville Depot. Y'all probably would remember that. That's the one they've made a nice, nice museum out of. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That way. And then I've got, um, I've got plenty, I've got pictures framed down there in the office that I could bring up here and do it. And uh, see, here's a big old one. Mm, that is a big one. And I think this, it, down here at the Mill Village, we call it, mm -hmm. was the first house that was moved on this trailer, on these trail, this trailer that was purchased and built. Mm -hmm. I love, but now they, that's the way they move them mm -hmm. this day and age, mm -hmm. like that. Okay, well that's great. Mm -hmm. in, in the 19, uh, about mid-50s, I worked at a, after high school, I worked, uh, or after school was out, I worked at Kettner's Supermarket uh -huh. in a, kind of across the street beside Kevin's. Isn't that where the office, Crouch office was then? In the 19 what? 50s. Yeah, I think he built it then because Miss Manolo, uh, wanted to go up on the rent, <laughs> and Daddy said, well, he just built, he built him a place, yeah. Cabin's up on North Main Street. And, yep. uh, uh, and it was just beyond that. Mm -hmm. the yeah, it's still office. there. It's still there. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, uh, uh, he had an office, built, he built an office building in Charlotte, too. He was, uh, uh, did business out of Charlotte. Emory and Jerry, they moved to Charlotte and lived down there and kept in business till, uh, in fact, we still own that building down there that they operate on. So I know that Emory has retired. Yeah, and just retired last year. So are there still other members of your family that are keeping this business going? Yeah, uh, Chuck, that's uh, Marshall Jr., uh, and, and Chuck are keeping it going. They uh, they bought Emory out. And, and, uh, they operating it now. Mm -hmm. So that that's your brother and his son. Son, uh -huh. still yeah, run the business. Still, still doing the business. Mm -hmm. And they're in the building up there where cabins used to be. You know where the uh, the bank is. Bank of America is there now, and they they next door to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Post office used to be right across the street. Now they just moved up there on Institute 
street. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You mentioned that when you worked downtown, you knew all the merchants. Who are some of those merchants downtown that you remember? Well, they did. <laughs> right, uh, let's see, uh, Mr. Craven, uh, uh, he was the merchant. Of course, you didn't talk to the manager, you talked to the clerks more than that. But uh, Mr. Craven uh, was merchant where? Who? Mr. Craven was a merchant where? Uh, Belch. Belch. Belch, and that's who I worked for for 25 years. No, he died. Uh, yeah, and Robert Carr uh, took over for him when he died. And then uh, uh, Ray Boone, my 25 years. They were real good about letting me stay. My job went to the computers. <laughs> they, they, uh, they eliminated me uh, when the computers came in. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, But they were real good about letting me stay on. They kept me there. It working in the office till I got my 25 years in, so I could keep my husband covered in health insurance, cause he couldn't get covered anywhere else, you know, cause he, he already had physical uh, problems. I was gonna say mental, but not <laughs> mental. I don't, yeah, I don't guess. <laughs> yeah, physical problems. So Mr. Cra- Mr. Craven was manager of Belks, and I, I, I'm trying to think of. Uh, they live up on North Main Street across from Dr. Tribute, uh, 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 Ruth Madry, Mr. Madry. He was at Railers. We had a Railers, and we had a Hazelton. Mr. Willis Hazelton had a dress shop. Irene Bryan had a dress shop. She was, the pool room was right across the street from our service station back then. And uh, uh, McNeely's uh, service station was up there on the corner from um, uh, Cabin's, you know, on where the Rev Co. Where is the Rev, now. Where the CVS yeah. store mm-hmm. is now. CVS. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, going on, and Irene Bryan, and then, oh yeah, T.O. Tig. You remember, I don't remember him. Western Octo. Western Octo, yeah. Y'all remember better. Better not, yeah. <laughs> see how old I'm getting, don't you? And um, uh, let's see, the Johnson brothers, the Johnson Hardware, Bill Johnson, and uh, Con- Conrad Johnson. Yeah, Con-, Con Johnson, we called him. And then the Piedmont Bank opened up the, down there on the corner, across the street from them, and. Uh, uh, of course, they've changed so many times now. I'm thinking they started out Piedmont Bank, but now they've come back. They've got another uh, Piedmont Bank. Too. All right, this this is a corner of Maine and Moore Avenue. Moore Moore. Avenue. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and then across the street there was Kelly. Uh, no, uh, who uh, Kelly Brothers? But uh, no, this was uh, Kipker. Ed Kipker. Ed, Kipker and uh, who was he in business with? Uh, Harding Rogers. Harding Rogers, yeah. At a furniture store. Yeah. Pe- Pe- People's Furniture mm-hmm. Store? I think that's right. Yeah, I think so. Uh huh. So what, we're talking mid 50s, right, Al? Yeah. Yeah. Mid 50s. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And then across the street from them, right there on Moore Web, was Harry Keeter's uh, taxi company. And then Rayla's grocery store. And then, you know, Miss Mary McNeely used to live in a house on Main Street. You remember that? Uh, that I don't remember. Uh, that's where Ellis Kelly and all of them are now. Uh-huh. Down in there. And they, oh yeah, Miss Flowers used to have a hotel there on down the street there from from a hotel. That's that's a little earlier than, than the 1950, though, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The hotel. Yeah, a hotel. Uh huh. Miss Flowers. In fact, I don't know. After she passed away, if they must have closed it down, or, or they got a bank down there now, where a uh, uh, Wachovia Bank is there now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you go on down. Then First National Bank was on down the street there. That's that's far. And uh, 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 my grandmother used to work in the cafe across the street from that. And I remember going. Uh, I don't know how I ever got to school on time. 
because I'd stop in there and eat and take my time. And I bet I was late every day, but the teacher didn't seem to say anything about it that way. But um, maybe they sent me off when I didn't know I was getting there on time. Oh, yeah, Rose's the dime store, 5 and 10. We had, oh, yeah, Delk's 5 and 10 store. It was beside Harry Keeter's, uh, Harry Keeter, Keeter there, uh, Keeter's. A uh, taxi stand there. Uh, uh, that was five and ten cent store. Hell, uh, Sir Francis Robertson uh, ran, it was a, a main person there. And uh, uh, Helen Burr, I don't know if y'all remember her or not, she, she had a son. She was Helen Walker's son, but they're both dead now. And, uh, uh, I don't know if there's anybody else. I'm trying to think who was mayor before Carol Beatty. Do y'all know? Robert Holsauser was mayor at one point in time, but I don't remember when that was. I don't either. I, he wasn't mayor very long then, was mm -hmm. it? Because Joe Knox has been mayor for I don't know how, how long. Well, Joe Knox has been out of mayor for probably eight years. Yeah, and I did not know till this past week that he had moved out here in the, in the center on the condominiums. The condominiums mm -hmm. that way out there, like that. Well, do you do you recall any of the the people who were teachers at the high school when you the went? Teachers, mm -hmm. oh, Miss Mary McNeely, mm -hmm. Mayor Moore Deaton, uh, Selma Johnson. Uh, Mr. Holt, we, we were crazy about him. He was the football coach. He taught in the eighth grade, eighth grade math, and the coach. Let's see, Mr. Donaldson was the uh, principal, and uh, Mary Mo, uh, uh, Miss Margaret Fink, she married, uh, oh yeah, she married um, John Bean. John Bean. And they're both dead now too. And uh, let's see. I probably think of them all. You you want me to go get my annual? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That way we have a, that. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Miss uh, uh, Brawley, uh, Crip Brawley's wife. Miss Presley Brawley, yeah. yeah. Presley. Uh, no. Oh, she was the most. Uh, the smartest woman. We used to test her. Uh, it opened up the dictionary and spell out words that we couldn't even pronounce. Spell, and she could pronounce it and tell you the meaning of it, <laughs> no matter what word you, you picked out or anything. What Miss Florence probably? Yeah, Florence probably. That's correct. That's her name. Yeah, and uh, I understand that the uh, Quill uh, Preston Brawley uh, that he's out here. Mm -hmm. Moved out there too. Mm -hmm. Goodman Drugstore was down on the corner, on down the street there, on the other side of the bank. But I didn't, didn't know uh, who, what Goodman that was that ran that. And then that Rankin's, uh, Rankin's store, you know how they've remodeled it now and everything, was on down the street. The depot was across the street. You know, from them. Are you following me where mm -hmm. I'm? Yeah, we're at the corner of Center and, and, and Main. Main, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell. And then Johnson's uh, was across the street there on Broad Street from the depot. And the ice ice plant, back then you had to buy ice to, to keep your food <laughs> cool. You didn't have refrigerators back then. Uh, you mentioned that your family, some of members of not your immediate family, but were, were but some of your your cousins were or were involved with Morsel Roofing. Oh yeah, that was my uncle and my granddaddy, uh, L. W. Bub. They called him Bub Westmoreland, and uh, uh, Graham, and he's paid, he just passed, and Donnie Westmoreland just passed too. So that leaves Wayne and Doobie. Uh, Doobie is one of the, uh, of, uh, he is Donnie's, uh, one of his triplets. See, I had the, 
I had the twins, and then Martha and Donnie had the triplets, two girls and a boy. You know, Shelby? Uh-huh. Shelby, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, uh, Shelby is married to Wayne. Right. Yeah. And uh, But uh, they just had three boys. I mean, I think three children. Right. Two two boys and a girl. I oh, do they have a girl? Did. Well, okay. See, that's how you don't keep up with them. <laughs> like they had two boys and a girl. Yeah. Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. And so Wayne got... Yeah, they used to get up on, of course, Dottie now, he had emphysema, and I think that comes from that tar. You know, they had to put so much tar in that toxic for emphysema, cancer, or that. Mm -hmm. Of course, he, uh, his wife died first, Martha. She was a McConnell, uh, Abner McConnell. Now, he worked at Bell's, and Ross Brown worked at Bell's. Y'all remember them? They cold. <laughs> These people yes. that's watching this probably will will remember them. And Leo Robertson. It was uh, uh, not there. She was there. Different the people. Okay. Uh, they started in business and roofing businesses. They managed to stay in business so far, so good. And I hope I hope they continue. That way, because uh, Wayne is uh, uh, Graham's son. Let's see, Wayne is that way, you can't tell. And his two boys, and Doobie, that's Donnie's son. Let's see, they just had the two boys and the girl, Emily, and like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, was there anything else that you wanted to talk, talk, tell us about? Growing up in Mooresville? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I think we, we would walk uh, Saturdays. People would come to town and park on Main Street, just sit there and sit in your cars and watch people. And people would just walk up and down the street. That's how you'd see everybody. But now you don't do that. But then, too, we used to, uh, you know, like I said, take in the movies and we'd have to walk home after the Owl show on Saturday night. That's when you did your dating. And of course we had the, the skating rink, Brown skating rink, rink and uh, the swimming pool out there. And then, uh, I can't tell, then Daddy, uh, when uh, uh, he bought all this property down here, he made a lake back here, and we had our own private swimming hole <laughs> back down there. But it's dried up now and all gone like that now. So uh, I can't think. Uh, oh, I'll probably think of a thousand things after y'all, <laughs> after you're gone. But uh, I can't think. Be and think right now. I didn't know you was going to interview me. I thought y'all. <laughs> I've got a question. Uh, did the Crouches own a lot of land or build houses back in the the section that's? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Before you get to Harris's development, uh -huh. yeah, aren't there uh -huh. a lot of My houses daddy, back um, in there? He would move people, you know, that wanted a, wanted a vacant lot or something. He would move the house and move them out there. And they, we, I believe, we had, uh, uh, I think, about nineteen or twenty houses back down there. And he wouldn't, he would, he didn't put them on designated lots. He just moved them in, and you couldn't tell where they were. But we've sold that now, and they're supposed to be uh, May the seventeenth. Is what the Bill Bowman? Uh, Y'all know him, mm -hmm. Bill Bowman. Mm -hmm. That used to be my next door neighbor. I had to tell that on him when he was a little boy. He lived next door to me up here on East Ireland, and I come in from work one night, and his mother come telling me that she had to run to the grocery store and buy a quart of milk because Billy, Bill, had sat there and drank the whole quart of milk <laughs> while I was gone. And uh, I wouldn't have known the difference. But that's when San Edmiston, they used to deliver milk, uh, you know, in a truck uh, every morning like that. And now you, you go to the grocery store and buy your milk. You don't, it's not house delivered like they did back then. So that little community of, of, of houses was made from houses that were moved, moved in there. Moved in there, fixed, uh -huh, fixed up, moved in there. We had Rosie Mills. We had 
the seedling that she lived there forty some years. John Mills was a house mover. Daddy was uh, usually in chair, Robert chair for his men that we worked. Uh, would give them a house, uh, show, uh, a place to live, live in, like that. They fixed up a lot, a lot of them. Then, of course, we ran them, mm -hmm. you know, to other people. It was a, a black community, like that. And they're supposed to be uh, go build. The sign says, you know, go build uh, different things, but they sure have. It's been over two years since we sold it all up there. And they hadn't got, hadn't got started yet, but I understand May the seventeenth. That name is stick, that date sticking in my mind because Bill Bumble said that's when he's going supposed to get his money out of them, and they start supposed to be. But I understand that that they had a big project going in Salisbury, and uh, they wanted to finish it first. And same way with the Chester property up here. You know this road. You notice it when you come down. This house back here is supposed to connect with it. He had to co connect it then to get water. He didn't get water till in uh, December or, the, or January this year. Built that whole house down there without new water. And uh, uh, in the, uh, and he's in the city limits. He's put we sold the, the ten acres back behind me here to Perry Oliver. Who was built there, and he comes up around over, over here to this road, like that. So, so, uh, so all of this property out here at one time did all belong to the Crouch family. Uh huh. To Daddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He bought it. Okay, well, Miss Miss Mara, we we certainly do appreciate your your allowing us to come and interview you oh. and tell us all well, about the house you. moving business. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a unique business. Uh -huh. Not every little town has a house moving business. business. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they're supposed to be to know it. They can't tell. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Thank they, you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.